Hey, we want to thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that something was said that would give you encouragement, something that will help you strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ. Our goal is to cover the entire earth with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If this message has been a blessing to you, just let us know. Leave us a comment in the line. Give us a thumbs up. And so until the next time, God bless you. I was asking the Lord what to minister on this morning. The Lord had given me a title and he just called it NIL right? It's the name, it's the image, it's the likeness of Jesus Christ. And so if you are a, a college football fan or a college basketball fan or you're a gymnast, you know what NIL means to student athletes, that they're now able to monetize their name, right? And so if, if you know, I know a lot of college athletes are mad because I'm sure Billy Sims could have made a lot of money you know, because if you wore the jersey number 20 that had his name on the back, somebody would have to give him some money. Amen. How many know that Jesus came to give us his name, his image, and his likeness? He's already monetized it. And so all he wants us to do is just accept his name. This morning, I can't talk about resurrection without talking about the garden. Because the resurrection is a process of what happened in the garden. The Bible calls Jesus the last Adam. Because we had a first Adam who did not do what God actually created and designed for him to do. He lost the name, the image, and the likeness. But what I love about Jesus is that he died so that we could have his name, his image, his likeness. And so this morning, I just want to be a little theological this morning because I believe when you come to church, it shouldn't be all self-help. And, and it shouldn't be hooping all the time. Well, okay, I'm going to leave I'm gonna leave that alone. But I do believe that when God's people come into the house of the Lord, they need to leave with something. Amen? And so I want to talk about resurrection, but I want to talk about it by way of the garden. And so the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female so the ladies you got a piece of this too you got a piece of this too created he them while we're standing with heads bowed we just have a quick word of prayer father we thank you for what you're doing in this place we thank you for the risen savior today we thank you today that because he rose then we can rise again today god we thank you for every family that's represented here today god we ask that you would touch us today, touch our hearts and our minds and our spirits today, Lord. We thank you that as the word goes forth today, that it will hit the hearts and minds of those who are here today, causing increase in their lives today, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold today, God. We thank you today that you have invested in us today, God, your glory today, your love today, God, your forgiveness today, God. And we just thank you for all that will happen in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. You may take your seats. Just touch two or three people today and say, I'm glad that you're here today. Amen. What we understand from Scripture, oh, y'all are still greeting, okay. 
I just want to quickly draw your attention to what we understand from Scripture is that the Bible is actually one book, right? And so we have 66 books, but it makes up one Bible. So we have 39 Old Testament, cha- uh, Old Testament. we have 29 New Testament chapters, but they also, they just make up one book. And so the book has to do with the life of mankind how mankind was created, how mankind failed, how mankind was redeemed, right? And the redemptive person in the Bible who, who we see in the, in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament is Jesus Christ. Sometimes when we read the Bible, we think that the Bible are, are some isolated stories, but they aren't. They are one book. It's many stories about one person. Isaiah said he was coming, and Ezekiel said that he was coming. And when he gets to the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they begin to write about when he was here. And as soon as he left, Luke began to write Acts, saying that this is what he did, because it's all about Jesus. Say, it's all about Jesus. So if you are a Christian or you're not a Christian yet, it's all about Jesus. And so the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, therefore, Just as sin entered into the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way came to all people. So I just want to draw your attention that the Bible says, just as sin entered the world through one man, that one man was Adam. Say Adam. The Bible says, and death through sin. So when sin came, death came. Death would not have come if Adam had not sinned. Are we following me? And so the reason that death reigns supreme now is because sin was in the earth. So the Bible says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, it says, and in this way, death came to all people. So what Adam did affected us all. Because Adam was one man, but all men were in one man. So when one man fell, it just wasn't one man falling. It was all men falling because we all came from one man. You got to understand that. You're like, well, how can black and how can white and how can Hispanic? We all came from one man. So so when he fell, we all fell. If he would have been blessed, then we would have all been blessed because we were all in one. Okay. So, so, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people because all sinned. You may say, wait a minute, I didn't sin, but if you were in Adam, when he sinned, you sinned. I told you I'm going to give you a little bit of theology this morning. Verse 13, it says, to be sure sin was in the world before the law was given. So, notice that, well, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Hold it there. So, it says, to be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given. And so all of my Bible scholars, you know who God gave the law to. What was his name? Wrong. Moses. That was my joke for the day. It was, it was Moses. So God took Moses up to the mountain, gave him the law, these things called Ten Commandments. But notice this. Even before God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, sin was already here. Because Adam was here first, and Adam sinned first. So to be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. So you can't hold people accountable for what they do when you don't tell them what to do. You can't pull someone over for speeding if they don't know that there's a law that says what the speed limit is. Parents, you can't spank your children. Oh, I better leave that. I better leave that alone. If you don't tell them what to do. The law first, consequences next. So, but notice this. So the Bible says, go back. To be sure sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law, but sin was already here. So verse 14, it says, nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to Moses. So from Adam to Moses. So from Adam until when God actually gave Moses the law, sin was already here. It was already here. 
God gave Moses the law to show us that we needed help because we could not keep the law on our own. And think about the law. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt love thy mother and father. Thou shalt worship the Lord and keep him holy. Don't make any graven images. Some of the most basic things we couldn't keep. Couldn't do it. But sin was already here, and that is why we could not do it. So when God gave the law, it wasn't to keep his people back. It wasn't so that he could spank them or punish them. It was for them to understand and get their eyes open to the fact that I need help. I need help keeping my hands from the cookie jar. And so the Bible says, nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command. Death was already here. You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to break a command. You didn't have to sin. Sin was already here. It says, as did Adam, because what Adam did, we all did. It says, who is a pattern of the one to come. I like that. But the gift is not like the trespass, for if many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many. So the same way that one man got us into this, one man can get us out of it. The only thing is, you're going to have to accept this other man, because it's a gift. The Bible says, verse 15, but the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many, verse 16, nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses, but it brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? God created Adam and Eve to reign. He created them to reign. I just got just a couple of points uh, this morning. And so, you know, God created man and said, don't eat the fruit. And when you eat the fruit, you'll surely die. Yeah. Say die. Die. <laughs> die in the Hebrew actually comes from, it means to die, die. When you, when you reference it out, it means to die twice. And what we understand is that when they ate of the fruit, the Bible says that their eyes were open. And eventually, they both died physically, but that day, they died spiritually. Side note, side note, just because you do something and you don't think that there's a consequence today, you, you have put something in motion, but you may not see the total consequence of your decision until later. Let me get back into my preaching. That was just something I put in parentheses for, just something in, in parentheses. So my first point is image. Say image. The first thing that God gave Adam that Adam lost was his image. You may ask, well, hey, what's, what's the problem? The problem is when Adam was born, he had everything he needed. He just didn't know he had everything he needed. It's sad when you have everything you need, but you don't know you have everything you need because if you don't know you have everything you need, you'll keep looking for something out there. Y'all don't want to talk to me. So, so God said, I'm going to come and I'm going to talk to you every day. I'm going to give you the wisdom that I want you to have. He said, there's a tree in the middle of the garden. It goes by the name of the tree of, good of the knowledge of good and evil. And he said, I don't want you to touch it. What is God saying? He's saying, I don't want you to understand this knowledge over here until I'm ready for you to receive it. Because God is a good father. There are some things you don't introduce to your children until you think they're ready to receive it. So he said of the knowledge of the tree of, the good, and, of good and evil, he said, it's going to be there. And there may be a time that I will introduce it to you, but right now, my wisdom is enough. 
<coughs> Say his wisdom is enough. Sometimes God's wisdom is not enough for us. Sometimes we want artificial intelligence. You'll get that one later. They were dealing with the great God who had all of the wisdom, but instead they wanted to get something that was artificial. Say image. The Bible says this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image. Image comes from a Hebrew word. It's called salim. And it's an image, something cut out, a shadow, a representative form, a resemblance, like a photograph. When you take someone's photograph, that's their image. Meaning that Adam had the same characteristics of God. We indeed are a chip off the old block. When God created Adam, Adam looked like God. What are you talking about, Pastor Randy? Let, let, let's just explore the beginning of Genesis. Because when God created anything in Genesis, when he created the trees and he created the flowers and he created the birds, he said everything will reproduce after itself. So the trees reproduce other trees, and the flowers reproduce other flowers, and, and, and the birds reproduce other birds. And so now there may be different kinds of birds, but they're the one species of birds. So whether you are a robin, whether you are a parakeet, whether you are a pigeon, you still fall underneath the species of bird. Because all things that God created, they reproduce after themselves. Newsflash, we were created in the image of God. When people see you, they ought to see God's image. You know why? Because if you had children, your children going to look like you. Because whoever births you is who you look like. You'll get that. Whoever gives birth to you are the same characteristics that you have. You're going around, that's not my baby. That baby looks just like your nose, your eyes, your head, your forehead, baby, look just like you. Because whatever you give birth to, you look like them. So that's why we were God's image. We were cut out from God. God's shining on us. His shadow is his image coming through us. We resemble him. No wonder the devil got mad. The devil was close at one point in time, but he wasn't the image that we are. Oh, I got, I got to move on. I got, I got to move on. So God created everything in earth by speaking to it. When it came to the light, he said, let there be light. When it came to the land, he said, let there be firmament in the land and let the firmament in the man land divide the waters from the waters. And he created an expanse. But everything he created, he created by speaking to it with the exception of man. With man, he said, let us make man in our image, which gives an indication that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is communing on what man should look like. And when they couldn't come up with anybody else or any other, he said, well, we'll just make him after us. So I'm going to rule in heaven and he's going to rule in earth. He's going to be my representation on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. So God said, I don't have to go down there because I put my man down there. He's got my image. And when people see him, they see me. Isn't that what Jesus said? Jesus said this, if you've seen me, and if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. Matter of fact, he said, I don't do anything of myself. I only do what my father tells me to do. Because I'm created in his image. 
Why do we think that if we're created in God's image that we don't have to abide by the image? Say image. Man, I got a long way to go. And I'm just going to throw this out here for all my Bible scholars because you're like, well, we're created in God's image, and the Bible says that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The Bible also says in Isaiah chapter 59, it says, is the arm of the Lord too short that it cannot save? Is the ear of the Lord dull of hearing that it cannot hear? So it lets you know that some of the characteristics that we have are some of the characteristics that he has. You better hope he has some ears. That way when you pray, he hears what you say. And that's why we see the enemy in the garden saying, I've got to take this image. He, he said every time he comes around, he reminds me of where I used to live. Every time he comes around, man, he reminds me of what I gave up. An image, an image that he could never, ever, ever get back. Say image. image. Point number one, image. Point number two, likeness. Say the likeness. Because the Bible says, it says, and God said, let us make man not just in our image, but in our likeness. Likeness comes from the Hebrew word demuth, and it means likeness or similitude. It says to be in fashion, to function like in action or appearance. Image is salim, which means we have the same characteristics of God, that God created us to look like him. But when he said in his likeness, that means now we act like him. It's not good enough just to look like him and not act like him. So he said, I've got to create you in my image and in my likeness. Think about this. We have to act like God because the first thing that God did for us, he said, I'm going to create man in my image and in my likeness, and I want them to have dominion. That's how we function. Conjunction, junction. I'm too old. I just look young, but really, how do you function in the earth? Because in the beginning, God made you to have dominion. So the very person that tricked Adam and Eve tricked them out of dominion because they were over him. They just didn't realize it. Say likeness. So God's image is his physical nature. God's likeness is his spiritual nature. So I look like God, but then I also function and I act and I behave like God. So when God created Adam, he gave Adam everything, everything he would ever need to look like God and to act like God. Say dominion. Do you have dominion? If not, you should. If you are a Christian, God made us in his image to express his likeness wherever we go. Amen. You're like, well, why was Jesus crucified? He was crucified so we could get our image back. Is this making sense? I, I've asked for some help today. I just need three people to come. You already know who you are. You want to be spirit, don't you? <laughs> no, wrong one. So in the garden, God created this great man who was spirit, soul, and body. Is this making sense? Because God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The enemy said we can't have this because he has dominion. So then the Bible says that he took the form of a serpent and he came up and he talked to Eden. He said, did the Lord say? 
Because his goal is to cut this man off. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Because God would come, the Bible says, in the cool of the day. Cool of the day is actually come from a Hebrew word is rock, ruach, and it means to speak. Because God would come, and from spirit to spirit, he would speak to Adam, telling Adam everything he's going to need. The enemy said, if I can close this compartment, then these two, they're going to be all right. And what happens is when sin entered, the Bible says that their eyes opened, but their spirit closed. That's why they said, I don't feel comfortable anymore facing God. I don't, I don't feel comfortable in his presence anymore. Y'all don't want to talk to me. It's like, something's wrong. They didn't know what it was, but they're like, something is wrong now. So if you don't have a spirit, that means you conduct your life by your soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions, what you feel, your personality. I, I, I feel like going, but I don't feel like going. I'll know that I should forgive, but I don't want to forgive. And my brother here, my brother here is like, my feet hurt, my neck hurt. This morning, some people had to deal with, I'm tired. The bed feels good today. I got other things to do because this is all body talking. God wants to talk to you through your spirit. But our spirit had been disconnected. It was still there, but we had no relationship with God. So now Adam is evicted out of the garden, and he's having to live life by what he feels. So many of God's people are living life by how they feel. Because if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus, see, because Jesus is the only one who opens up your spirit. It's there, but it's just disconnected. It's dormant. You wonder, matter of fact, the apostle Paul said this. He said, you are a Christian, but you are a carnal Christian. You don't listen to what God is telling you in the spirit. You go by what you feel. No wonder we miss out on the great blessing that God has for us because he wants to talk to us spirit to spirit. Do you know your greatest victory will come by what God tells your spirit, then turn around, face them, and then what your spirit tells the rest of your body? Instead, face me. Now you turn around and face them. This is how some of us live our lives. Whatever our body tells us, that's what we do. I'm a preacher. Do you think I like coming to church every Sunday? I started off by saying I was going to be with my parents to celebrate their anniversary, but, but this is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When I think about Jesus, I think about someone who came to give his life to redeem us, to turn the light back on. The Bible says that it's the spirit of man that's, or the spirit of God that's a candle to your way. It lights up who you are. The Bible says that the word of God will be a lamp unto your feet. It'll be a light to your path. But what, if you, what do you do when you don't listen to your spirit? You live in flesh the rest of your life. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I've given you something to think about this morning. Because we are a three-part being. When the enemy tricked Adam, the enemy tricked all of us. Until you're born again. That's the born-again experience. What's born again when you're born again? This person. Because when you accept Jesus Christ, if you got a corn on your foot, you're going to have the same corn on your foot. If, when you get born again and your hairline is kind of going back, then your hairline is still going to be kind of going back. 
Unless you go to some of the barbers I see on Instagram because they'll paint it on. Now they're like. <laughs> Say, God, God renew, renew my spirit. My spirit. Yeah. David said, you can take everything from me, but just don't take your spirit. Houses and cars and you can take a lot, but just don't take your spirit, because your spirit is how I live and move and have my being, and it's the spirit that connects with you on bad days when I didn't think it was going to turn out, and this man was saying, I don't feel like it's going to work, but this man said, boy, stop it. God has always been with you. He always has. He always will. He ain't never stopped. This man said, how are we going to make this thing work? This man says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. This man said, I don't know where to go. This man says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. I wish somebody in here knew what I was, what I was talking about. This is why you need your spirit. When this man has issues in the body, this man says he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we were healed. It doesn't care what you feel like. It cares what he says. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Oh, I felt that in my spirit. Nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. The only problem is he can't talk to you through this person. He can't talk to you through him. Because you got to go through tiredness and rejection and hurt and, and then you start getting into how I feel. You're like, well, they hurt me, it, it felt bad, and I felt rejected, and then this person says, we're going to get them back. This is the person that keeps this person up all night talking about what you're going to tell them when you see them in the morning. This is the person that says, God said that we should forgive. We should forgive so you can get some sleep. Say, that's what Jesus did. Sometimes when we think about resurrection, we only think about a body. Resurrection is your spirit because you could not hear from him. If there's anything that needs to be resurrected, it's the spirit. So I can go back and walk like Jesus and talk like Jesus and behave like Jesus and dominate like Jesus and have victory like Jesus and my family is like Jesus. Y'all don't want to talk to me because anything that comes from you should look like you. If you're a Christian, you ought to have a Christian family. You're like, well, Pastor Randy, you don't know about my teenagers. I had teenagers. We just keep speaking the word in the name of Jesus. And then this man may say, bro, shandada ka shandara bota. This, this man may say, I need you to go get your oil and go get every sheet and pillow in the bedroom. Put a little on the top, put a little on the bottom, put some in the nightstand. Put some oil over their door when they go in. Well, check that. Sometimes you have some kids, you took the door frame off. So you just, you just put it over the ledge where the door used to be. Thank you all. Thank you all. Yeah, you can take them. You can take them. Say, I've got his image. Say, I have his likeness. When Jesus came, notice this, when he came, he walked this earth for 33 and a half years. He fed people. He healed people. He performed miracles. He preached the kingdom, but he did all of that because of redemption. 
The reason he came was not to feed hungry people. The reason he came was not to do all of the miracles. The reason he laid divinity aside and put on humanity is to come down to redeem us because nobody else could do it. Because we were all in Adam, born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So that's why he came. Let me get a little, the- little bit more theological. So, so we find him in the garden and he's saying, Lord, is there another way for us to accomplish this without me having to die and to be separated from you? And let me help you with the misnomer because sometimes we have the wrong definition of death. Death is separation. Death is separation from the, the spirit from the body. When Adam and Eve died, they died physically on down the road, but they died spiritually because the presence of God that was in them vacated. They were separated. That's why the Bible says if you eat of it, you're going to die because there was a separation. They didn't drop dead right then, but to live life without the Spirit of the Lord on the inside is death. So he's in the garden and he's saying, not my will, but thy will be done. The Bible says that he was praying so hard until when he was sweating, it turned into drops of blood. Say pressure. (laughs) Because he realized this, that if I continue, then at some point in time, I'm going to be separated from you. And that was something that had never occurred in the life of Jesus, to be separated from his father. Amen. But the Bible says he did it because of the joy that was set before him. Joy, joy. Joy, joy. You're like, no, no, my name is Melvin. No, your name is Joy, Joy. joy. He, he did it because of the joy that was set before him because he said, if I do this, then I'm going to bring everybody back. All those who want to come back. So then he goes to the cross, and on the cross, he, he lets out this statement, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabathani which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In Scripture, you'll never hear Jesus call the Father God. He always called him Father. But on the cross, he felt the separation. He who knew no sin became sin so that we could be called the righteousness of God. So, so on the cross, he began to experience what sin felt like. No wonder he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He didn't call him father. He called him God, like someone without a relationship. So he feels pain and he feels rejection and he feels hurt, and he feels all of the passions that we feel as humans. The Bible said he was tempted in every way, but he sinned not. And then he says, Father, into thy hands, I commit not my body, I commit my spirit. What faith that is. Because he had already told his disciples that, hey, the Son of Man is going to be taken up, he's going to be beaten, he's going to be persecuted, and he's going to be crucified, he's going to die, but on the third day, he's going to rise again. Well, now this is the beginning of that. So he says, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit, meaning that I'm going to trust you to do everything you said you were going 
to do. Say faith. Because this is the thing, Jesus always commended people with faith. When it came to the centurion soldier, the centurion soldier said, you don't have to come to my house, just send your word. He said, oh, what great faith. When the lady with the issue of blood came and, and pulled from his garment, the Bible says she pulled virtue. He stopped and said, somebody touched me. And he said, your faith has made you whole. He complimented that because that's the kind of faith he had. All things are possible to him that believes. That's what gave him peace on the cross to say, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Amen. And then he said, it's finished. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And from there, they took the body down, but the spirit had already been separated from the body. According to scripture, Jesus went into the hell plains, y'all don't want to talk to me in here, as a walking spirit down there, along the Sheol or Hades, whatever you're, the, the, the place of departed spirits. And the devil said, I think we got him. But that was day one. Day two, they're like, oh, yeah. And they had a little ain't no stopping us now going on. Because they thought, we have him. Day three came. And God was a God of his word. The Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will also quicken your mortal body. So, so day three, God's hand of glory went down with the Holy Spirit to rejuvenate this spirit. And to say, you can't live here because this is someone who should not be here. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. But this is the trick because Jesus was already down there with Moses and Aaron, and Abraham, and Noah, and David, and Isaiah, and Ezekiel, and Daniel, Joseph, Jacob, they're all there because nobody could get to heaven before the first fruit went to heaven. So, so they were waiting on the redemption. So then Jesus begins to preach to them. Y'all don't, don't want to talk to me. He's like, somebody down here needs to hear the gospel. Some people, somebody will say, well, when was, when was uh, uh, Joseph born again? When he was preached to by Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians that he led captivity captive. So, so when God raised his spirit, he just didn't go by himself. Y'all don't, don't want to talk to me. So everybody that was waiting on the redemption before Jesus came, when he got up, uh, somebody got it over here. When, when he got up, they got up. They, they said, Jesus, is it time to go? He said, oh yeah, it's time, it's time to go. And he said, I got something else I want to give you. Not only am I giving you my name, or not only am I giving you my image, not only am I giving you my likeness, but I'm going to give you a name. That when you go through life, oh, the Bible says it this way. Let's go to Philippians. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. This is the beauty of Jesus, is that he was 100% God, 100% man, 100% spirit, 100% flesh. Because it took somebody to look like a man to redeem a man. So, so he was 100% man, 100% spirit. 
And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above the name that God first gave Adam and Adam forfeited it. Jesus Christ came back to say, I'm going to give you another name. See, in the Old Testament, they called him Jehovah Shalom and the God our peace and Jehovah Sidkenu, the God our righteousness, and Jehovah Nisi, the God our, our banner, and Jehovah Roha, the God our, our, our shepherd. But, but God said, this, 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 you don't have to use all those names. I'm just going to give you one name. At the name of Jesus, demons will tremble. At the name of Jesus, the Bible says, angels will assemble. At the name of Jesus. Y'all don't want to talk to me? I, I, I better leave that alone. It's one name that's above all. Above every name. Next verse. That at the name of Jesus, Every knee will have to bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things underneath the earth. See, the name of Jesus is, as, as, as one marketing agency said, he's everywhere you want to be. Heaven, earth, beneath the earth. Because what he did down there has given him a name everywhere. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Why do we pray in the name of Jesus? Because God has given him a name above every name. Why do we sing praises to the name of Jesus? Because God has given him a name above every name. I'm talking to someone right now, you felt like, mm, I need to change my name. Because sometimes our name comes attached with all the stuff we've done. Y'all don't want to talk to me. You ought to ask some of my brothers who've had to do some time, and then when they get out, they start looking for a job, but, but their name follows them. So they say, I need a name change. God, I need you to rename me. God is saying this morning, I got another name for you. I got another name for you. My name is Randall L. House Jr., but I also go by a believer. I go by the believer of Jesus Christ. Not my name, his name. He has given me his name, his image, his likeness. So now I have dominion in this earth the same way he gave Adam. What's your name? Because you need to attach his name to your name. That's right. My name is Randall L. House Jr. I'm a believer. I approve this message. Y'all want to talk to me. I feel the glory of God in this house to born. I feel the glory of God in this house right now. Would somebody be so bold to say the name? Okay. I, I just wanted to make sure that y'all knew the name. So could somebody be so bold as to say the name again? When you don't know how it's going to work out? When your kids get on your last nerve? When you have too much month left at the end of your money? When you can't sleep at night and when anxiety comes and when you felt rejected and, and people left you and you got divorced and maybe you had an abortion and maybe you had all kind of things that happened. There is one name. There's one name. There is one name. See, NIL helps all the college kids live a better life because now they got some money in their pocket. 
NIL for a Christian, it helps you live a better life. Because it's not you anymore. It's him. Christ said, the li- uh, Paul said, the, the life that I now live, I don't live to myself anymore. I live to him. I live for him. He said, I've been bought with the price. The scripture says that we are joint heirs with Jesus. Say joint. Joint means equal or co-equal. I'm glad that I have a joint checking account with my wife. I don't want to talk to me. You ought to be glad that God has given you his name to use. We'll stand this morning. I'm done. You know, because you really don't know someone until you know their name and what comes with their name. Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say the son of man am? And they said, some say you're Elijah the prophet, some say John the Baptist, and then he asked them, who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up and said, not the son of man. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Christ was not Jesus' last name. It was a name that described who he is. When we read in Scripture, we read, we read John the Baptist. Well, that was the description of who John was. We read in Scripture, it says Simon the Sorcerer. So now when it says Jesus Christ, Christ comes from Christos in the Greek, and it means anointed. It means Savior, Messiah, not Jesus of Nazareth, but Jesus the anointed who wants to regenerate your spirit and give you a better life. If you're here this morning and you don't know him, I just want to lead you in a simple prayer. This is how you get his name, his image, and his likeness back. You have to accept the work that he has done for you. Some of us think too much of our own name. you don't know him, I want to lead you in a prayer. If you do know him and you say, you know what, Pastor Randy, I was one of those people that you were talking about that lives their life. I've got an open spirit. It's not disconnected or dormant, but I live my life by the soul. Whatever I see, whatever I feel, that's what I want. And sometimes whatever I see, whatever I feel, whatever I want is to the demise of my own body. This is your day. You can have another name, another image, another likeness. When people see you, they ought to see Jesus. I love it when I go around people and they say, something's different about you. And it's not because I'm wearing a suit or anything. I, you can go around people, and just by what you say lets them know that you're different. They could come to you talking about all kind of issues at home, spouse issues, children issues, and you'll say something like this, God can work all that out. And some of you could be so bold as to say, let's go ahead and pray right now because we're going to call on the name of Jesus.
If you don't know him, just lift your hand. If you don't know him, lift your hand. If you're here this morning and you say like, you know what, I've fallen back from where. Some, sometimes you can look over your life and know that spiritually speaking, you are a lot further ahead than where you are now. I want to pray for you too, because when you leave here today, I want your conscience clean. Because that's what the blood of Jesus does. It cleans our conscience. I want you to lift your hand too. Amen. Repeat after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I need your help. I am sorry for all of my sins. And I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Give me your name, your image, and your likeness. I thank you that your NIL deal is the best deal I could ever have. Father, thank you for coming into my life, being my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give God praise in here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pastor Randy has a wonderful word. I'm ready to receive it. Are you ready to receive it? If you love the word that Pastor Randy is giving us today, please give us a thumbs up. Also, please consider sewing into Impact Community Church. You can do so on our website at www.impactcc.org. Have a blessed day.